everyone, and welcome to More Sewing Centers, May's Virtual Sew Fun Club. We've got a lot to talk about, and I'm so excited to have Embellish be our featured trunk show this month. But before we get to um, the trunk show, we've got some business to take care of. So with all So Fun Clubs, we want you to like, comment, and share, and you'll have a chance to win one of these wonderful nest. And what these are for is you can put all of your notions, all of your tools um, that you need right next to your machine. So they're a perfect thing um, for you to have next to your sewing machine or anywhere in your sewing room to hold all of your wonderful things that you need for sewing. And each of these are valued at $18.95. And we're gonna give away two of them. So be sure to like, comment, or share on our feed here and you will have a chance to win one of these wonderful nests. And we also want you to stay tuned for the end of our episode here tonight because we are going to have virtual show and tell. And with that, there's also going to be a prize at the end. So stay tuned to see all the wonderful inspiration from all of our Moore's customers. Now, I also want you not to forget that you can always check out all of the activities and everything that's going on at Moore's Sewing Centers by clicking on our link, moores-sew.com, and you can see the events that are coming up. You can see all the classes that are happening at all of our five locations, either at Mission Viejo, Huntington Beach, Brea, Corona or Temecula. And you always wanna check because you may be looking for a certain class and it may be at the Corona store. So you wanna make sure that you check all the time our website, moors-sew.com to see everything that's happening with more sewing centers. And next I'm gonna introduce our special guest. Okay, so without further ado, I am so excited to introduce Paula Bramwell from Embellish. Hey, Paula, how's Hi. everything down where you are? Oh, it's turning spring for a couple of days, so it's wonderful. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Uh, we are so pleased to have you join us here for our virtual So Fun Club. And I always like to get a little bit of back information. So Paula, what brought you into stitching, to embroidery, and to all the talents that you currently have? <laughs> well, I started as a young gal mm -hmm. sewing at home. There's the fabric, there's the machine. It's your joy. And just kind of progress, let it kind of go for a while. You know, so many people had machine knitting and that kind of started me back into it, uh, the machine knitting, which is how I um, wound up in England. Because oh. over in England is where I really got started back with my quilting. Maybe I should kind of go a little bit back just a touch because I actually have a fine arts degree in Texas. Oh, wow. And where did you so, get that from? From what the college? Lewis School of Art, uh, U of L, it's it's part of U of L, and um, I've always loved my textiles. Kept with it. Um, I think I sold my first quilt back in the seventies oh, out wow. of a gallery in Indiana. So it's always been, you know, right there with me. Um, and I, so I've just continued to sew and quilt and everything. Wound up living in England. And while I was there, I worked with a fantastic dealer, sewing dealer, mm -hmm. and did a lot of teaching. And that was when embroidery was really getting big. And I would come home for vacation every so often. And it was during one of those vacations that I went to a show. And I met Ricky Brooks. Oh, very nice. And this was the first year that RNK had started. And I brought one back of each of the stabilizers, took them back. And as it turned out, we started importing the stabilizers in England. 
Oh, and across set the up pond. Programs. Yes. So I go back basically from year one. And um, from there, when they heard that I was contemplating coming back to the States, then they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Well, we are and so happy that we have you, Paula. Hey, you are definitely a treasure it. with all of the knowledge that you have with embroidery and sewing. So yes. very good. Yes. So, so I have so been with them. I'm yes. sorry. No, no, no. We, we have to learn to um, like pause, huh? Especially me, because I have so many questions I want to ask you. Now, we've been blessed and I've met you in person here at our Moore Sewing Centers. And um, it's just so exciting that we have you here virtually so that we can conduct our Sew Fun Club. And what do we have to show them today, Paula? Oh, we have three fantastic projects that we're gonna talk about. And I have them up behind me, but I also have some that I can show you a little easier. So the first is behind me. This is what I'm gonna talk about. And this is The Beach is Calling. And I absolutely love this project. And I'm going to start with this one to kind of show you a few things. This is from a collection um, that Hope Yoder did, and it's called Beach Life Pillows. And it has several different beach things. And being here in the South in Kentucky, our vacations are spent near the beach. So this just perfectly works out. I've used quite a few products that from the em embellish division um, that I absolutely love. But this is a collage based. So I do have the different fabrics. I've incorporated cork for the beach area. And then of course, a little bit of seaweed, a little bit of mylar in here. You see, I like a little bit of sparkle in almost everything I do. And Sparkle, we have the heat transfer foil up here. Now, I'm going to kind of show you all a few of these products so you'll know what I'm talking about. This is Mylar, and I actually have, I'm going to pull them up before me, some of the products right here so you can actually see what they are. This is Mylar, and this is what is bringing out this bling right here on the back of my sea turtle. It is now, absolutely gorgeous, Paula. We can see it on the screen. So it gives a little shine and shimmer to that turtle. Yes. And well, I have to... Of, oh, here we go again. Mylar, I know. The thing about this Mylar is I don't need different colors because whatever color thread I'm using, that's the color the Mylar goes to. So with this, and of course the background will also make a difference. When you see this one, Michelle, that's green, right? Correct, yeah, it looks definitely green. But look at this one. Oh yeah. How did you do that? You turned it blue, Paula. I just used blue thread. That's amazing. Same mylar. Mm -hmm. So that way you get, if, and I, if I had worked it with red thread, it would have come up with red. It is the best fun stuff to just add that little pop to a project. Now I love, I don't know if you know this, but... I love machine embroidery. I love quilting. You know, I love sewing. But my favorite thing to do with machine embroidery is applique. And I love to use the different textiles, um, the cork, the, you know, the vellums, the, I love just, and I, I don't want to give a teaser, but some of the other things that you're showing are going to give such texture and dimension to those products. So that turtle, if you hold them up, 
the the different fabrics and in the bottom i don't know if everyone noticed but the cork is weaved straight through that other fabric and that's just it just gives it so much dimension and texture and look at that oh my gosh that turtle shell is just shimmering again <laughs> very cute and where i've used just one piece of cork on this one here i added more wow so he's almost you know it's a it's a bigger beach almost. it's a bigger beach yeah, he's almost <laughs> on the beach yes <laughs> He just wanted to take a breather from all the yeah. water. That's all. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the um, the saying up top. The beach is calling and you've used the foil there. Yes. This is heat transfer foil. And when you're working with this, with your SVG files, um, you're going or your FCMs, whichever machine you have, then obviously you're going to reverse it. This is a one step heat transfer foil. But when you're working with it and you're doing your cutting and it, we have um, the embellish maker software and it will ask you save to cut. And when we have that in our uh, crafting cut in our embellish maker, what happens is the save to cut ask you what you're using, whether you're using a flocking or a fabric or heat transfer vinyl. So the heat transfer foil is treated the same as a heat transfer vinyl. And it will ask you questions. Did you reverse that? Just to make sure you don't cut it out wrong. But this is great because I have a little piece here and here you can see this is the teal that i have used looks kind of funny in this um the lighting but it's a lot of fun very easy to also bring that extra bling in there well it absolutely sparkles with your saying in the words and you know if i had to do that by hand i tell you it wouldn't happen so the fact that we can use our our machines and have them cut the foil for us. It's just perfect. And so precise yes. and dainty are those words. <laughs> well, yes. And I picked those out because I thought, you know, I wanted something that had movement to it, mm -hmm. but it still worked with it. Now, one of the things that I did use on here and is a weeding tool and you'll see there's my initials on there you'll see that i have initials um or my name written on my tools i use my tools and i travel with them so i'm not one who just talks about them and sells them these are actually my tools that when i when i go anywhere you see and <clears throat> excuse me this is coming in a little leather case it has a little cover at the top. And the reason is on this weeding tool, it is very sharp. Because what we have to do is we have to take away the background that's around this uh, saying. And this makes it so easy to use. Now it's sharp enough that I also use it as a stiletto when I'm sewing. But I want to give you a little tip about our heat transfer foil. And this is kind of something that um, I tell my students and, and my attendees at events. Here is my leftover from the beaches calling. So on the corners, I have a little bit of extra foil. I don't get rid of that because Oops. If you look on one of these other projects, this is my little mermaid. This has an applique down here, my little mermaid, but you'll see it kind of shines for the red hair and look at for her, her little fins and her little body. Ah. This is a leftover piece of foil that instead of using fabric, 
I put leftover foil, heat transfer foil in there, treated it as the fabric. So it, I had my placement stitch. I had my tack down. As soon as it did the tack down, I trim away the excess, finish stitching, and then I can come back in and then just do, take a little one of my, uh, oh, the release paper. Uh -huh. and I can press it. And it's also some leftover red. Oh, on her hair. Isn't that sweet? Cute. So I save my little, my little bits and pieces like that because you never know when you're going to need them. Now I have a, I have a question for you, Paula. Now, I like to save my leftover pieces, too, and I like to utilize everything that I have um, as far as fabrics and other items. How do you store your leftovers? Do you store them in the tube or share with us your little technique here? Oh, my gosh. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> so if, if you're here, here she comes. Welcome back, Paula. Oh, very good. So you have a container and look at that. You've used a lot of teal lately. <laughs> so I have mylar in here. I have foils. And I have applique pieces. <laughs> so if it's a larger piece, I do have a, um, a little container that I just lay them out flat. But otherwise... Yeah. It's Thanks. like your little container of jewels there that you get to pick through to utilize in other projects. That's awesome. It is. And in fact, some of those scraps are from a project that I did. But, you know, this also has the cork. Yes, it does. Well, <clears throat> there's no reason we can't use cork for other things. And the cork, it comes in packages and whoops here we go and the packages you can either buy in one color like this is the natural but i tend i'm going back to my bling i tend to get the package that has color yeah. in it, has some yeah. I, you know and so on this this is a sample when I was making up a project, these are three little little quilt pieces that I made into little wall hangings. So I like to test things out. So here I've used the cork on the horns and on his nose. Oh my gosh, that is so cute, Paula. And I love the little accent of the of the cork. It gives a different texture and um, a different totally a total different look for it. Well, yes, instead of just having all fabric, we might as well, we have so many wonderful products on the market now that are at our fingertips. And if we can buy in the smaller packets like this, it makes it great to have fun with it. Yes, yes. Now, is there any special way that you need to um, secure down your cork? Well, with the cork, and with the appliques, because this is all applique work, Correct. I actually did the background and then laid these down. I used the foolproof repositionable webbing. Oh, This is, and this is fantastic. And the reason I love it is one side is pressure sensitive. The other side is fusible. So I'm going to fuse it to the back of my fabric. That's going to give it a little sheet area that I can work with. Um, this is what it looks on the shiny side. This is our fusible. I don't know if you can see those little glimmer dots. There we yeah, go. Yeah, we can see the little, the little sparklies it looks like. And then this is kind of a waxy side. So I'm going to fuse my fabric to this side. And then I'm, I'm going to do a rough cut and then cut it out. And that's when I'm going to do my precision cutting. 
And then all I have to do, let's say this was an applique. I take my weeding tool and I make an X. To score and it, yes. I pull from the inside out. A lot of people, we end up having um, an applique and then you start to take the edge away from the side. Do you know what I mean? The release I do, paper? I do. Yes, yeah. Well, what that can do is pull your adhesive away from the back of the fabric. So if you take it and do like an X or even a mark, you can kind of roll the paper and it will release that paper. So the I tip is it will always keep your edges nice and secured. You're not going to lose it there. Um, that's right. That's a great tip and one I didn't know. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> well, it, it just kind of makes sense because, and especially, you know, you could go in there and kind of pick it out. But mm -hmm. if you just take it and roll it and have the, the whatever little bitty uh, cut Score that you line. make yeah. through that, then those edges on the inside will just kind of bloom out and then you're just pull it from the inside out. Very nice. Leaves everything intact. Yes. So, so, and that's what's so good about this, because after you've got everything down, then you're going to fuse it. Now, on the cork, because that's the main thing you asked me about, I'm going to put a pressing paper, an applique sheet, parchment paper over the top of it when I go to fuse it because the cork is more susceptible. Plus, I don't want any adhesive. If I have anything on the outer edges of my appliques, I don't want that getting on my iron. So I pr always protect anything that I'm pressing with an applique sheet or parchment paper. So another good tip, anytime you're using ad, um, a double-sided adhesive, if it's a stabilizer or, or whatever you're using, go ahead and yes. use something to protect your iron. And I tell you, there's a reason why they make um, iron cleaners. It's because so many people just go ahead and iron away. Um, oh. It's better to take your time um, and use something to protect your iron beforehand. There's another little tip I've got for you. Ooh, ooh, share, share. I learned this from Cookie Gaynor, who is one of our embellished educators because I'm always cleaning my irons. Mm -hmm. As it's warming up, this is... Is that one of those... Magic erasers. Erasers, yes, yes, yes. Now, in England, they use these to clean the front steps because no one has a dirty front step. Can't have a dirty stoop. No. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> But these will work on your iron. So as it's warming up, you're going to dampen it. Mm -hmm. It looks like brand new when you finish with that. Oh, what a great I'm tip. And we all, over. I know I love my uh, magic erasers for lots of things. Um, and now one more use for them. One more use. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just, it's, it was just life-saving for me because I've always used dryer sheets and then you have to clean mm -hmm. kind of the residue off. Boy, yes. that's so easy now. Yeah. Well, so, very good. So this whole thing, if you haven't caught on now, this is a kit, the Beach Life Pillow Kit that we have for you here today on um, our virtual So Fun Club. And what else is, is there anything that we've missed on um, the software or CDs? Well, there is a CD mm -hmm. and the CD is, that I have used is the Beach Life Pillow. Whoops. And I'm sure that you all will have this in uh, that you can use an, another, a better one than this. Um, I, I know that with the CDs, they're quite small, but it does have quite a few different things. Now, that's the project. And on this project um, and in this kit, there are a couple other things and I've got them right here. This is the Embellish Soft Cutaway. A cutaway is a permanent stabilizer. This is what I use as my base. 
So okay. I'm going to cut this and lay it out. I'm also going to use, and so you'll see how soft, this is also right here. And the soft cutaway is also something that I use if I'm going to embroider and I want to have um, an applique, but I don't want to embroider straight onto something. If I think a design is um, lo very large and I'm worried about having a problem, if you put your soft cutaway in the hoop by itself and embroider straight onto it, this is your fabric. Then you can cut your applique out and sew it onto whatever you wanted to put it on, like a jacket or a sweater or something that you're too nervous about embroidering straight onto. This is that, what I use. Yeah, that's a great tip. So if you wanted to add a really cute turtle on a pocket, um, yes. and obviously hooping a pocket is one of those things where I, I haven't even tried it. I would sew the pocket and put it back on, or if it was on something, I would remove the pocket do the embroidery and put it back on. But with that tip there, you can technically do it on the stabilizer and then attach it after. That's a great tip too, Paula. Well, I love especially it. If, you're gonna, if you have jeans, mm -hmm. you don't have to open that seam all the way up the side or up the middle because in fact, I had a pair of jeans and, and I don't know what happened to them. I think I've left them at a dealer, but I wanted the, the embroidery coming up the side. Now, Paula, so, please tell me I, it was a sample and you just didn't leave your pants at the dealer. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sample. Okay. Okay. I had to clarify. <laughs> yeah, it was a sample. Um, and I actually have the blouse. It still matches it. But by opening it up only to the knee, I was able to get all of that on there. And mm -hmm. all I had to do was pin them in to know where I wanted them to be after I embroidered several of them, pin them the way I like them, stitch around the outside, done. Wow, easy. And that's taken something so complicated um, and eliminated all the heartache. So great yes. tip. Even um, I have a wool sweater that I brought mm -hmm. back from England and I did not want to embroider on that wool sweater. So I embroidered it as an applique, stitched it down with invisible thread. Very Which nice. Which reminds me, do you use a lot of invisible thread, Michelle? I have, I have. It depends upon the project that I'm working on. Um, you know, it's one of those things that it has a need. So where are we using it on this wonderful turtle? This so we been, have it on the, the grass items? It's been quilted the entire thing with oh, invisible wow in the front and on the back. So it is completely invisible. It, it, it is living up to its name. It is. And it's very easy to use. Um, it's a monofilament. And so it withstands heat also. But when you're putting it in your bobbin, you want to slow the speed of the bobbin winder as slow as it'll go because you don't want to stretch the monofilament. Okay. That's a trick. Oh, very good. So, so what other what other items are in? Oh, you're going back to it. What other items are in this wonderful kit? This is the Angel Loft batting. It's a bamboo and cotton blend. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely as soft and wonderful. Oh my gosh. It is yeah. wonderful. I love bamboo when, batting. I do too. And it will hold about 40,000 stitches in a five by seven hoop. But if you put it with, I don't know what, here it is, a piece of this soft cutaway that adds another 10,000, you have 50,000 stitches that you can put in a five by seven hoop. Very and nice. Your quilting can be up to eight to ten inches apart on the bamboo angel off 
So back. you're not going to have any distortion or any um, stretching or deterioration to the padding. That's amazing right. that you can do all those stitches and still have it be secured. Yeah, because yeah. nothing's worse than, you know, two years down the road and um, your your items don't quite look the same. So with these That's wonderful items with embellish, it will hold up. Mm -hmm. Very yes. nice. It is. I also used a topper um, when I did my embroidery. Okay. And on here, I used, whoops, I pulled out the wrong one. I used the iron away clear topper. I don't know, Michelle, if you have ever tried this, but it is about half the weight of all the other iron away toppers on the market. Okay. It is designed to pull away from stitches. So the only time I really need to iron it away is in between tiny little bitty things, little stitches. Otherwise, I can almost always pull it away from running stitches or satin stitches without distortion. Oh, that's great too. Yeah. Yes. Very yes. cool. So, and there's one whole... other thing I think oh, oh, in there. Okay. <laughs> I know this. This is a this kit this is keeps fantastic. Going. <laughs> it has. So we have the design, the Beach Life um, design collection, soft cutaway, angel off batting, the webbing, repositionable webbing, the clear topper the mylar, the cork, the weeding tool, and, and the, the invisible thread comes in this one. Oh, very nice. And also, I don't know about you, but I'm not a real fan of doing bindings a lot of time, but we have the quarter inch stitch perfection tape. It is a water soluble, double sided sticky tape. And this is what I use for all my bindings now because, and it's in here, I to pull it out. Here we go. It's sticky on both sides. So as I have sewn my binding down and I go to turn it under, I can put that tape all the way around that the inside of that binding and finger press it down and it holds it while I stitch it in the ditch. Very good. So no longer do you have wavy edged binding. So great yes. tip as well. Yeah. And Bella just thought of everything, haven't they? So all <laughs> of these items that we have in this kit, this is the beach life pillow kit. Um, if you were to buy them individually, it would be over $220. But you guys know us. Here at so Fun Club, we have secured an amazing price. And you can get this kit for only $149.99. Can you believe that? So you're going to have all the items to make. And if you can hold up that, that sample one more time, Paula, you'll have all the items to make this a adorable the beach is calling turtle um, quilt and then you'll have the knowledge because you're going to be able to learn how to use the products and then you'll have the knowledge um, and the software to make many many more but michelle yes i don't know did george tell you that he was putting in a bonus design collection of course of course there's a bonus <laughs> what of do course. we have <laughs> This is the Boho Boutique Quilt. Oh, oh, yay. Well, you know, there's always and more and but wait. <laughs> so it's the Boho um, Boutique Quilt Boutique that we're getting yes. additionally in that kit. So yes, I, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he gets these prices, but all of those things for $149.99, it's quite amazing. And um, it, yes. Yeah. So yes. you're going to want to pick up those. But I know we have another kit and spring is in the air. So can we talk about the next one? Hello, spring, Paula. Yes. And that's the one that is right up here behind me. It's kind of hard to see because, oh, there you go. But I also have another one made up. So you can see it a little easier. Oh, wow. I see lots of fun stuff. I know you're going to tell us about. 
Yes. So on here, here is that mylar. Now, what color is that mylar? Well, green. There, it, yeah, it looks green. <laughs> I put it green fabric underneath, but I used a green thread on top. And then this is chenille. And here, and you probably need a little closer. There we go. Oh, look at that stitching. Yeah. Is that the foil? No, this is like a minky. Oh, wow. So you can see, uh, there it is. You can kind of see it. Yeah, I can see the details now from the side. Right here, this is embossed. So I have the shape on the outside, the stitches holding all of that fabric down, but I've left the same shape in the middle being soft. Now, Miss Michelle, this was put together in the Embellish Maker software. Oh. And it has, what this is, is I took one shape, and I made all of my flowers, they're different shapes or different sizes. But with one click, I turned it from a simple outline to an applique with the mylar. With one click, I changed this from a simple shape to chenille. And with maybe a couple, three clicks, <laughs> I took this one and did the embossing. So but down here, I have rickrack stitched down, and those are my stems. That is very sweet. And I love the use of all the different techniques on those flowers. Now, we talked about the, um, the other stuff. Let's talk about that chenille. Um, and some people may not understand what it is, how you get it, um, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Yes. I know you're looking. Um, and I'm looking because I was looking for my little sample. What happens is, and, and you know how things go. Yeah. Um, I will pull that in a few minutes. Well, let's come back to it. it. Let's come back to yes. it. Yeah. But what happens is you have your placement and a tack down. That's going to be layer one. Then you lay three layers on top of that of fabric. I love to use gauze, the double gauze, because okay. it gives it more of the finish of the chenille that we grew up with, the real softness. And then what happens, it has stitches and it will make these channels. Okay. Here. Once that has been finished stitching, then we take what is called a chenille cutter. Now, this is the embellished chenille cutter. It has a soft grip. I have changed the guide because it comes with two guides. The short one is if you have curvy areas. Okay. But this being a straight, I wanted the nice straight one. And all I have to do because it doesn't stitch in between those channels, I just take this and just glide it right up in between the channels. And then I take a soft toothbrush or a chenille brush. And the trick to get it really soft is mist your brush, your chenille brush, or mist your soft toothbrush, those bristles. Okay. And then just kind of do Fluff it around. Away. Yeah. Yes. And so by you're basically distressing the heck out of that fabric yes, so that we get it soft and fluffy. Now, I know um, one of my favorite things when I was growing up was to go to my grandmother's house and lay on her chenille um, bed cover. And you're going to get that same feeling with that chenille cutter and with, you know, fabrics that you may already have in the house. So, very cool. And that's the neat thing about your sample here, Paula, is each of those flowers, different texture, different feel to them, and also different products that we're using. So and of course, nice. what do I have up here? Well, it looks like Me? some beautiful foil. Yes, of course yes. it is. <laughs> I love it. And once again, it's that delicate um, um, 
printing that you've done. And then you're going to use that wonderful weeding tool to get all the little bits and pieces out again. Yes. Very nice. It makes it a whole lot easier that way. Mm -hmm. And of course, here we go talking about different products again. Now, this one, I where I use the Angel Off batting on my beach little wall hanging. This one, I used a different batting, but I still used the soft cutaway for my base. Okay. So I used the, and let me see, here it is, the premium fusible batting. And the premium fusible batting is a polyester batting. And that's why I needed the soft cutaway because I need something that is stable because a polyester will stretch and the soft cutaway of embellish is nylon. So okay. I like that because I can use that in my t-shirts, my sweatshirts, my quilts, and nothing is going to distort because I haven't used a poly uh, cutaway this because this is nylon. And that's also why I can use it for my appliques because I can use a heat tool and cut out around those appliques. And then here, this is how soft it's, it's not real thick. It's just nice and soft, but it is fusible on one side. So with this, you can lay. I'm waiting. You're going to ask you can, a question. Go ahead. No, I'm waiting to see what you're going to show. I know that there's a technique coming here that I'm going to want to remember. Well, the main technique is going to be our next project. But okay. this one, you can either fuse it. I prefer to fuse this to the back of my fabric. Okay. So this being one piece here. I, I can fuse it to the back of that and then everything will be go through that. So it makes it really nice. If you don't want to fuse it, you still have your cutaway in the hoop. You can lay your batting down and then you can lay your fabric on top of it and baste. So I have a question, Paula. Way. So just yes. to make sure that we're following. So you're going to use your your stabilizer in the hoop, and then you're using the batting. Um, are you hooping the batting too, or are you laying it on top? Um, yeah, I have that in there with it. Okay, very good, very good, yeah. Yes. Very nice, so, so it all gets cinched together, so to speak. It does, so I've used that now, but I actually, uh, coming from the quilting background, I like to prep most of my quilts, something like the beach life where um, I'm using the cork and it's going to be more for a wall hanging. I don't worry. Um, I know that it has several layers. I have used the bold underlay. And if you haven't used a fabric preparation, what that does is you could take a looser woven fabric and it gives it the strength. It's a permanent fuse to the back of the fabric. Yes, it has some give to it, so you don't have to worry, but it's not going to give unless your fabric does. But even with a burlap, you can back it with um, a fabric prep. This is the bold. Originally, it's for decorator fabrics and things like that. I use it for my quilts. Um, then we also have a lighter weight, but that I use for a lot of my silks and my satins and my taffetas. It keeps down, these keep down needle shearing and okay. it just lifts the thread count. Um, I love using it. So on the Hello Spring, um, the soft cutaway, we have the fusible premium batting. We have the bold underlay. Now, I also use the uh, topper, the iron away topper, because I want to make sure that in those areas that I'm not going to worry because I have different things in here. So I do use the, bad, the, um, the topper. 
I take it away before I do an applique though. Um, we have a lot of different things going on and I have to cover it for certain things. There is also, of course, the heat transfer foil where before I use the teal, this one, I'm looking for my little sample. I thought I had it here. This one is copper. So it's a little bit deeper than a gold obviously, but it still has that really pretty, I'm still looking here. That's all right. But it has, you know how these little things happen. Yeah, they get they stuck kinda, to something else. Yeah, it, it is. Um, but it's the same heat transfer foil that I have up there at the top. And of course, um, I'm still going to have to weed out as I did before. Um, so you have the weeding tool and you have your chenille cutter you have your mylar that's on that green flower. But um, what isn't shown, and I'm looking on here for my guide. Hello, you want to tell me what's in? Here it is. So um, mylar, the copper, the iron away. This one has um, the rotary cutter. How many of you all have used the Quilters Select Rotary Cutter? Well, can you see me raising my hand? It is absolutely the cutter that I use. And the funny thing is, I'll give a little testimonial here. When I first saw these come out, I went, first off, do I need another rotary cutter? Because I already had probably 10. And I saw the demo and I picked it up first thing and I went, oh my gosh, this thing's heavy. Why would I want to use that? Well, now I would not cut without it. Um, it helps you. That weight helps you to secure what you're cutting. And I can go on and on and on, but I love it. And absolutely, you know, testimonial hands down. I use mine all the time and I don't even, you know, the other ones are there, but um, I tend to give them away to my friends that start quilting. Um, and I keep those quilter select ones for me. My sister was doing some sewing recently. I mean, she used to do uh, her husband's suits and her coats and all like that, um, which I never got into that aspect. But she saw me using mine. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what are you doing? I haven't seen you bring that out before. And I'm like, well, no. But the wonderful thing about this is and it's an Alexander Quilter Select product. So it is ambidextrous. Whether I'm right hand or left hand, it doesn't matter because the blade opens because all you're doing is pushing the button. And when I do that, I don't have to bang it. I don't have to smack it. All I have to do is touch, holding that in and touch the mat and it's open. It just slides with the so easy. Yes. yes. So that's the advantage. Now, yes, I have bells on mine. <laughs> that's so that it doesn't walk away. <laughs> you know so where it I is at all times. <laughs> I was wondering what the noise was, but now that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I use my products and carry them everywhere. <laughs> So, yes, I love that. And also, there is a two and a half by 12 inch um, cut ruler, ruler that, yeah, that comes yeah. with it. If you all haven't tried these, um, the advantage on these, they have a grip, in, qu in quotes, on the back. So, you have your shiny side. And then you have your kind of a dull side. This has a coating. It's a non-slip. And that's why it's great. The Because of Alex being left-handed, all of her rulers and her mats are labeled or numbered top to bottom, bottom to top, right to left, left to right. That doesn't matter whether you're right or left-handed you will always be able to count either direction. 
which is amazing. And I no. love them. Yeah. I actually oh. um, did a, one of my vlogs, More Sewing with Michelle, and I go over, um, I called it the trifecta of cutting. Um, and I use my Quilter Select mat, my um, rotary cutters, and those rulers. And I'm telling you, they are another testimonial. They are in my room and I use them all the time. Highly recommend them. They are worth their weight. That's for sure. They are. Yeah. And I ended up having to work in the um, in the kit room one day, um, standing all day long and cutting. And, and I had the Deco Magic, which is kind of a leatherette fabric and fabric and, and all. And I thought, I'm going to go home and I'm going to be so sore from cutting all day long. My arms, my hand wasn't sore. My feet killed me. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> so all of these items, let's go back to the kit real quick. The Hello Spring Quit kit that we have for you today. So we have the three items. We have all the different techniques that you're going to use in this kit. And um, the retail on those would be $218.41 if you had to purchase these items. But you know us here at More Sewing with, um, whoops, whoops, at More Sewing Center for our virtual Sew Fun Club. And we have um, secured a very special price for you. And the price for this kit, the Hello Spring, is $149.99. That's incredible for all of the stuff that you get included in Hello Spring. But... Oh no, oh no, we got another. And wait, there's more. And wait. So George has managed to get probably one of the latest design collections. Uh -huh. This is the crazy cat lady. Uh-oh, I might be that person. <laughs> <laughs> this is the little table mat or oh, the nice. mat for the food. And this is actually using our new chalkboard fabric because it's water resistant. So you can just wipe it off after they've made a mess. Yes. No problem. And it's an in the hoop project and it does have quite a few designs. Quite a few felines there. Very nice. Yes. Yes. And that's so, a bonus. So what a great little extra additive that we have in our Hello Spring kit for only $149.99. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. Not only um, are you going to be able to use lots of different techniques, but you're going to be able to create that. And you have those two CDs that you can create for years to come. So that what a what a great value we have there, Paula. Now I yes. know we have one more kit that we need to talk about tonight. And that kit is Animal Art Bundle. So let's get yes. a, a, a shot of that and let's get talking about the wonderful things in that kit. And this is the Animal Art Collage CD. Okay. And I'll show you it to begin, and you're gonna see something you recognize probably. That little giraffe. Oh, there you go. Right here. Yes. Uh-huh. I just took his glasses off for that little wall hanging. But, and that was through the software. But yes, I took the seahorse. And here is this project. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So we've got the seahorse um, in a, a sea of different fabrics, swimming in the ocean, so to speak. He is just yes. stinking cute. So tell us about him. What's the fun stuff he has? Oh, you know, I guess I like to have more fun just playing. <laughs> so I took fabrics, blues for the ocean, just made different size strips. Okay. And you can use short ones and, and overlap them or long pieces. It doesn't matter. And as you can see, some of these strips are wider than others. So I took and laid down my soft cutaway. You're getting a hint here what I'm I doing. I am. 
we have some favorite stabilizers that keep appearing. We yep. do. And then I take the premium fusible batting. And I lay it fusible side up. Up. Yeah, I got I know where you're going, Paula. <laughs> yes, you do. Because 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 that is laid up, that's the fusible side. So then I just take and lay my strips of fabric down. And you can over, and I would always overlap them a little bit because as we go to quilt, then it could be that it could, that it could open up a little bit. So overlap them a touch. That's all it takes, about an eighth of an inch. And then once you have your background the way you like it, you're going to fuse that down. So you're making your own fabric for the back. Yep. And so easy and so much fun to play with those strips. It is. And then I went to the embroidery machine. And from the animal art collage, I made the seahorse. Now, you would think that this table would be small enough I wouldn't lose a thing. <laughs> well, you didn't lose them. We've just put something on top of it because we've been talking about all the projects. This is true. Yeah. And now this is the same way that I actually made the turtle with the repositionable webbing. Okay. What you're going to do is I put the repositionable webbing in the hoop, paper side up. Okay. It gave me the outline of the seahorse. From there, I put I do a little cross hatch through there and I peel away the protective paper, exposing Correct. the sticky side. Gotcha. And then I can do a collage oh, with very my seahorse. Nice. Or I can just use the one fabric. It doesn't matter. From there, but my fabric is adhered to my fusible, repositionable webbing. From there, it stitches out around it. And then, my lar. That's ah, right. there you yes. go. Little bit of my lar for some yeah. fun and blaze. For some shimmer and shine. Yes, you know, I can't help it. And all of these, when you look at these, they all look different, those mylars. They do. They do, absolutely. And they're just the same. Same mylar. So it's, this, it's this thread and the fabrics that it's pulling those colors from. Yeah, that's quite yes, in incredible. And I love that you have the option because us ladies... We love to have options if we're going to do applique, if we're going to make it collage, if we're just going to have the base fabric. So it's nice that you have those options where you can switch your seahorses up and really make them to your own personal likes and needs. Right. Yes. And the thing about that is then once I have him placed, and this is another, this is the very same seahorse. It's just the lighter. But what I mm -hmm. have here is the lighter fabric but I put an organza over the top just to give okay. him a little bling along with the mylar. Um, this one has a little bit of net over the oh, top. Very cool. So it's just adding texture and fun that I enjoy doing. And then I went and I got, let's see, do I have it up here? There's a fabric that's just all seashells. And okay. I laid a piece of repositionable webbing over the back, fused it. I went in and then I fussy cut my appliques. Oh, there you go. There we are. So that's where they came from. Very cool. Yes. And so some like here, because I have it overlap, I just have it stuck right up underneath that edge. 
So okay. it's kind of underneath and then some of them over the top. And this too has been quilted with the invisible because I'm oh. using so many colors. I've used the invisible. Very nice. So, so that way the seashells see. really, sh well, and that's the point, isn't it? We don't want to see because it's invisible. So that's right. nice. Yeah. So that way your fabrics are really the star of the show. And see, so you can see just a little bit of the quilting on the back, I think. Uh, maybe not. Kind of dark. Yeah. But that's why I love the invisible because it doesn't take away from mm -hmm. the others. Now, on like on the Hello Spring, the quilting was done in the hoop. Okay. And I have this, the, the channel or the straight line quilting for that one. And then that's after the quilting is done is when we add the flowers and all. But you need the, um, uh, the topper when we did the rickrack because that's sewn down. Okay. And that yeah. Rick Rack is a one click on that embellish maker software going from a straight line to Rick Rack. And then I can just either use the curve in the software of a straight line, a straight line curved, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then convert it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then if I wanted it to be freestanding Rick Rack, I could actually add the underlay. And those are the stitches that are laid down first for the rickrack stitches to go around and then right. you can have freestanding rickrack. So if you don't have that software yet, um, you could always use regular rickrack and, yes. and secure it the same way. Yes. So yeah, right. nice but to have this, options. But in Hello Spring, that's in there. It's in the design. Oh, very nice, yeah. Yes. So no, no reason to scrimp on that then, no. Mm -hmm. So in the animal art project what other items do we have are the stabilizers i know you're going to use some of the same ones let's yes. talk about what stabilizers besides um we've already talked about okay so we have the um that was the animal art collection you've got the premium batting again and Correct. of course we use that soft cutaway because it is poly and as we quilt we don't want the batting to stretch Okay. So I do pin it every so often just to kind of hold it in place. I don't. And when I do that, both of those have been quilted with the serpentine stitch. So it's just a regular serpentine stitch. Okay. But what I do is I change either the length or the width so they're not all exactly the same. So it looks more like wavy waves oh that's nice yeah definitely yes. just to kind of give there. it that extra little little bit to it um so we have the real foolproof repositionable webbing um they've put in there the um i'm trying to think what that code is we've got the mylar well i we love have, i think there's 10 <laughs> spools of embellished thread Oh, yes. And the great thing about that is the colors that we have are going to coordinate with the different projects. So you guys have thought about everything as far as the threads are concerned. And 10 yes. spools. Like, I know. I and those love are the my mat. thread. Yes, yes. I love the matte threads. They are a 40 weight poly. And, okay. But they don't have the high gloss, but they have, they still have a bit of sheen to it when you get it on there. But all of these have been embroidered with the matte threads. Very nice. So, I love those matte threads too. And I love, if you haven't seen them, um, it almost looks like it's a different layer to the quilt. So if you have the shiny threads, you're going to have that sheen, that that look that, um, you know, like on a typical satin stitch that we have in embroidery. But the matte finish, it just gives it a soft, subtle stitch to it. And you get all the color and all the variety of um, that thread there. So I love them. And I love to use them and mix them in between my other threads as well so that you get well, that Well, I'm going to show you something what I, yeah, with mixing them in just a second. Because, you know, in here we also, are, uh, you know, all of these bundles that you have, 
they are geared toward these projects. So they have the cut piece that's in here to make your projects. Mm -hmm. And you still get your mylar and the quarter inch um, stitch perfection tape. Okay. In there. But would you like to tell them what special price George has put together? Yes. You know, we, we keep saying on our So Fun Clubs that, uh, you know, He's known as Crazy George for a reason. He always secures the best prices for all of our customers for So Fun Club. So retail for this particular kit would be two hundred eight oh six, but George has secured this wonderful virtual So Fun Club price for us, and it's only one twenty nine ninety nine. One twenty nine ninety nine. Can you imagine um, right. the amount of fun that you're going to have with this kit? And I know. Paula, I know you got to add something here because you're, I can see you chomping at the bit there. Yes. Of course. So. <laughs> of course. Well, so what is it on this one? Yeah. Another one of the latest designs Ooh. they have added is the happy hour placemat. It is another project based CD. Whoop. Oh, very nice. I don't know if I can. Yeah, there you go. And in here, it has five different embroidery projects, different embroidery designs. Um, and yes, you can make them mock cocktails or you can make them as regular cocktails in here. So. Oh, very nice. There you, we go. Yes. <laughs> when you said earlier about using uh kind of mixing up threads and all yes so there's a special restaurant i love to go to and um so i just happened to pick this design to make up a sample of and this is on there so this is a little gift a little bag and I'm actually going to box my corners, but this is the green apple martini. Oh, wow. This has not only the 40 weight matte threads, but also the 60 weight flawless embellished threads. The flawless are our shiny threads. The matte are the 40 weight. Okay. So... When you see that, you can see and read those letters. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You can read the ingredients, the preparation. That whole recipe is clear as day. Yes. And this has been used with the 60 weight. Anytime you're doing uh, lettering, that keeps your C's from becoming an O. It keeps your E's from being turned into a dark spot at the top with just a tail on it. You get to see the dot over the eye instead of a longer eye. So, yes. So this cute little bag has the green apple martini. And mixing and those threads, so much fun. Yes, it is. And I love the looks of that. Um, look at the sheen on that, Mark. I don't know if you can see the sheen. There it is. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yes. The angles. Yeah. So pretty. So that is, the, whoops, here we go. The green sheen, that, of course, is the flawless, the 60 weight. The little shadow behind there is the 40 weight. And then it comes back with the highlight of the 60 weight. Very nice. So, yes. So that is the free design collection. And then you get your directions and a video on how to do the placemat. Very nice. So it's a braid with the corners in there. That's nice. Beautiful. Yes. So I have a question for you because okay. I know our customers. And I know our customers, after seeing all these wonderful projects and all the stuff that they're going to get in it, they want it all, Paula. They're not going to want to get one or two. Why wait? You want every single thing in there. So I think that we have a special kit. Am I right, Paula? Yes. 
Yay. And I think you have all of those information right smack in front of I you. Do. I bet. So <laughs> not only can you get the kits individually, but if you want it all, and why wouldn't you, Paula, you can get uh, all of them. And the retail on that would be six forty nine fifty one. But you know, you know us here at Moore's, we have a special price of only three fifty nine ninety nine, Paula, for all three wow. kids. Yeah, George is out doing himself this time. He is, and with that, that is a forty three percent discount. So, you know, I don't know why you would miss it. It is awesome, and I love all of the items that you brought to us here tonight to show us on Virtual So Fun Club. And thank you so much. And closing, is there anything you want to share with us? Or, yeah, I think uh, speechless, right? I am. I've just had such a great time, and I've just missed seeing everybody. So, um, you know, this if this is what it takes for us, then shoot, I'm going to be watching for you all on the videos. <laughs> well, very good. Well, it's been my pleasure to Mind have you. you here and you take care. And until next time we see you here, um, Paula, you have a very safe evening and we'll see you soon, hopefully. Take care and I, hello to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Paula. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Now, if you're going to be checking to see if you've won one of our special prizes for May's So Fun Club virtually, you're going to want to check back and we will announce it around May 30th. Um, that gives us all the time for our virtual So Fun Club to end, and then we'll be drawing those names. So don't forget, you want to like, comment, and share, and you also want to make some time and post your favorite new project that you have been working on, either machine embroidery, quilting, anything that has to do with sewing. We want to see it so that we can inspire all. So to get us starting on show and tell, I brought a quilt in that I'm going to share with you. And this is one of my recent quilts. I love to use up my scraps. So on this quilt, I used up a lot of my scraps, simply putting together in a scrappy design using my six by 12 ruler as a base. So I'm gonna go ahead and show the quilt. And you can see that it's just using a multitude of leftover fabrics. And then I added some squares on the sides and sew and flip so that I created the heart shape. For the backing of my quilt, I simply used a heart fabric. And you can kind of see on the backing here a little bit of the detail. Now, I love to do straight line quilting. So you can see that the lines on both sides are just straight. And I simply used my guide on my walking foot to let us get that pattern going. And I matched my threads to the heart fabric on the back as well as my binding. So it's just a really fun quilt put together in just a couple days. And it's one of those that you can do too. So use up your scraps, make something fun over the weekend that can be cherished by all. Now it's time for you to share your quilts.